Hello everyone, I'm Sister Vasa, and today I'd like to talk to you about the Orthodox Christian faith of Alexei Navalny, who was killed on the night of February 15th to February 16th. Some people say that he was actually killed on the 15th. In any event, he was killed on the feast when we in the Russian Orthodox Church celebrate the meeting of the Lord, the meeting of the Lord that thematizes the human being's encounter with Christ. It's significant for faithful Orthodox Christians that Alexei was killed on this feast. Alexei was killed in one of Putin's most horrific penal colonies in the village of Harp, a village that was built by Gulag prisoners in the Stalinist era. I'd like to talk to you about Alexei Navalny's Orthodox Christian faith and whether or not he can be considered a martyr in the Orthodox Christian sense of the word. What does the word martyr mean? In Greek, the word martyr, martyros, means witness, as I think most of you will know. A martyr is one who has been a witness to something or someone, has seen or gained the knowledge of something or someone, and then testifies to this vision or knowledge. In the Christian sense, a martyr is one who testifies to the knowledge and vision that is his or her faith in God as revealed in Christ and by the Holy Spirit. The martyr speaks of this vision of things, this truth, even when it is dangerous, even when the truth has become extremely inconvenient or even unbearable to those in power in his or her midst. Simply by testifying to this truth, the martyr incites what observers would call a disproportionate rage in those for whom truth is unbearable and they seek not only to silence him or her, they seek to torture and to kill the martyr. This does not mean that the martyr has never made a mistake or that the martyr is God himself. Of course not. A martyr is a human being like all of us, a human being who is not infallible, but the death of a martyr, one who stood up to the end for his faith and for the vision of Christ's truth, testifies to the fact that in this human being, in the martyr, Christ himself and his truth turned out to be the most important thing and even dearer than life itself, that is, the earthly life. Alexei did not all that often speak publicly about his faith, although it was well known to those who loved him and to those who surrounded him, but he was a profoundly faithful, believing Orthodox Christian. He is one who kept the fasts also in prison on Wednesdays and Fridays and during the fasting seasons. Alexei was Orthodox in the best sense of this word, of this word now largely discredited in Russia due to the shameful servitude of the Russian Orthodox Church to the corrupt and murderous Putin regime. Alexei became a believer in the early 2000s when he was 25. He writes about this on Easter of 2014 in his social media post of April 20th, 2014, that is on the day of Pascha that year. Let me read to you this Paschal message of Alexei from 2014. Christ is risen, Orthodox Christians. Congratulations to everyone on this great feast. Congratulations to non-Orthodox, non-believers, and atheists, too. I know that there are many like this among those who read this little blog. That's why I'm writing this post for them. Why preach to the Orthodox? Until I was 25, I was an atheist, and quite a militant one at that. Now I am a believer, but since I remember myself well before I was 25, I regard anti-clerical positions, a purely scientific view of the world order, and the ridicule of ostentatious religiosity without horror, shock, and dismay. The latter is even useful. However, it is Easter that seems to me the best contender for the title of Feast for everyone. This is better than New Year's, my friends. Think for yourself. This is a feast about the most important things, about the inevitability of the victory of good over evil, a feast of hope, a celebration of faith in a better future. 
What did he fight against? He's talking, of course, about Christ. Against lies, hypocrisy, slavery, injustice, usurpation of power, and swindlers and thieves. Against all that which is so disgusting to us, and it was disgusting for many before us, and it will be disgusting for many after us. And it was very difficult for him. No support, rallies prohibited, riot police poking spears, the media captured by the Pharisees, and scoundrels with real estate abroad are in power. And in the organizing committee of his party, every 12th is a paid provocateur and traitor in the service of the then center E. But they didn't put you in prison for 15 days with three meals a day. They would rather immediately use a seven-tailed whip with hooks on your back. The villains destroyed everything that was there. The disciples were forced to renounce. He himself was tortured and killed, and everything collapsed, and there was impenetrable darkness. What are all our difficulties and problems compared to what he experienced? But good, truth, faith, hope, and love still won. Yes, it looks strange to me that all this is written in capital letters, but how else can I write it? And these will always win. It is written about in a strange line, in an incomprehensible language, which today is quoted a million times. Of course, he quotes it in Church Slavonic. That's why Alexei writes that the following is written in an incomprehensible language. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs, bestowing life. Happy great feast of the resurrection of Christ to all of you, believers and non-believers. Happy great feast of the inevitability of the victory of good. From this Paschal post, it is clear that Alexei saw his struggle, quote, against lies, hypocrisy, slavery, injustice, usurpation of power and swindlers and thieves in a Christian way. His faith in Christ, in Christ crucified and risen, inspired his faith in what he called the beautiful Russia of the future. And in the fact that inevitably, as he wrote, good will triumph over evil. It is this faith, this Orthodox Christian faith, that makes Alexei not just a politician, but an Orthodox Christian politician, and I dare say, a martyr. He is a martyr just as Alexander Schmorell is a martyr. Alexander Schmorell, who is an Orthodox Christian member of the White Rose, a German resistance movement that spoke out against Hitler's regime on the basis of Christian faith. Alexander Schmorell was beheaded, he was guillotined, and also with his friends, the Lutheran uh, Christians, Hans and Sophie Scholl, Christoph Probst, who was a Roman Catholic, uh, was also martyred because he was a member of the White Rose. Let's remember, my friends, if people ask questions like, but was Alexei uh, this, that, or the other thing? Do we know who his spiritual father is? These types of questions in Orthodox uh, tradition are irrelevant when a martyr dies uh, for the Christian faith. Let's remember that the church even had the concept developed of baptism by blood. This is not Alexei's case because he was baptized and he was a believing and practicing Orthodox Christian. He didn't put up candles for the cameras as does a certain someone who is at the head of the corrupt regime in Russia today. Alexei uh, was profoundly faithful and he showed us this also with his fearlessness and joy as he professed the values of a true Orthodox Christian. Now, the criminals who killed Alexei, namely Vladimir Putin and those with him, want to destroy his memory, his glory. They also wanted to hide his long-suffering body without giving it to his mother, the courageous Lyudmila Ivanovna, for nine whole days. They withheld his body, demanding from her that she agree to have his funeral and burial secretly, and they will probably be disrupting or blocking his funeral 
uh, to be held on March 1st in Moscow, uh, they'll probably be blocking access to that. And a lot of people are scared to go to the funeral. Alexei's righteous blood cries out to God and leaves no one indifferent, my friends. His testimony also fortifies his beloved mother, I think. And I'm reminded of the words of the church hymn on Holy and Great Friday, which are spoken from the person of Christ himself to his mother, the Theotokos, and to all of us, the church mother. Do not weep for me, O mother, seeing in the tomb the son you conceived in the womb without seed, for I will rise again and be glorified. I'm also reminded of the prophetic song by Bob Dylan, It's all right, Ma, I'm only dying, or It's all right, Ma, I'm only bleeding. Those who killed Alexei also want to convince us that Alexei returned to Russia in vain, that it was pointless. But Alexei returned to Russia, my friends, because this was his calling. It was his vocation. There is such a Christian concept, vocation. That is that which God and not any human being calls each Christian to. And this is the mystery of each believing Christian called by God. It is a mystery between each faithful human being and God, even while it may not always sit well with those who surround the one called. Not everyone is called to martyrdom in the same way, although all Christians are called to martyria, to witness to Christ, to the truth, in whatever way they are given to do that. You will be my witnesses. Es este mu martires, says Christ to his disciples before his ascension. And God says in the Old Testament, you will be my witnesses and I am your witness, says the Lord God. This is why the church in Greek is called ekklesia, which comes from the Greek verb ekkaleo, which means to call out or to call forth. The church is a body of people called out to follow Christ. Alexei, as he himself wrote, from the penal colony and conveyed through his lawyers several months before his murder, could not but return to Russia. That was his place with his people. It was his vocation. Thus, many ancient martyrs appeared before the Roman pagan authorities or fearlessly toppled their idols in public for which they were tortured and killed. And their relics were often thrown out beyond the city walls into some garbage dump. Or, as in the case of John the Baptist, his remains were thrown into an unclean place. Then, of course, the faithful come and collect these relics as precious gems. And let us remember, my friends, how Christ himself, when his time had come, decided to return to Jerusalem when the Pharisees and the high priests there were already preparing to kill him. The disciples were horrified that he was going to return to Jerusalem, as we read in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. And as you might remember, St. Peter tries to talk Christ out of it, saying to him, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But Jesus responds to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, or you are a stumbling block to me, a scandalon. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. So, my dear viewers, about the journey of our beloved Alexei, let us be mindful of the things of God and not of the things of men, or even worse than that, the things suggested now by his main killer. Let us be grateful to God that he has manifested to us in our difficult times when many insist that nothing good can be expected either from Russia or from Russian Orthodoxy. Such a hero and a new Orthodox witness born and raised in modern-day Russia, Alexei reminded us of the true traditional values of Russian Orthodoxy, which is not for slavery, lies, corruption, and not for a criminal aggression against the innocent, 
which Putin and his corrupt regime have unleashed already for over two years against the Ukrainian people and against the best of the Russian people. Alexei also reminded us in the West that his values of freedom, of the rule of law instead of the rule of corruption and of an authoritarian regime, of basic human rights like the freedom of speech, of assembly, of religion, of self-determination, that these Western values are Christian values. Even while Kremlin propaganda constantly attacks Western values as if they are a bad thing. There are some self-loathing Westerners among us who readily swallow up this propaganda, thinking that it is Putin who is for Christian values or even for family values. Putin, who has no family, that he admits to anyway, who does have children from different women, but has never been married in the church, who has the blood of hundreds of thousands on his hands at this point, including that of the Orthodox Christian Alexei Navalny. Alexei Navalny, the loving and beloved husband, father, son, and precious witness to Christ crucified and resurrected. Alexei believed in and consistently saw clearly as his vision the inevitability of the victory of good over evil. This is why he was so joyous all the time, so full of humor and devoid of fear, even when he was physically already just skin and bones, having been imprisoned and tortured and isolated from his loving family and friends for the final glorious three years and one month of his earthly life. Alexei constantly saw the norm that was his norm, this inevitability that the good will defeat evil even though it wasn't the reality around him. But he believed this is coming. This is the secret to his consistent joy. One for all, he reminded us that we too can believe in the inevitability of the victory of good over evil. And we too can glorify the memory of Alexei all for one. That was one of his favorite phrases that his followers would always repeat, one for all and all for one. Alexei also reminded us that we should stand up straight, orthi, as orthodox Christians, and speak the truth at a time that professes itself to be the post-truth world. And he reminded us that we should do what we can to witness to the truth. Alexei said, there is no shame in doing a little. It is a shame to do nothing. By his prayers, Lord, preserve and save his family, Yulia, Dasha, and Zahar, and all of us. Amen.